Now we have all of our um, formula translated from notation into values. So I'm going to go ahead and compute the numerator. So I would do my 4 times that 1,205 minus 6 times 300, or 700, excuse me, 735. And that gives me 410 in the numerator. Now in the denominator, I'm going to have the square root of 4 times 14 minus 6 squared and then times that by the square root of 4 times 137,225 minus 735 squared. Okay, when, and when I do all that, I get 416.53 approximately in the denominator. So now to finish this off, I just need to, to do my division. I need to take my numerator divided by my denominator and... When I do that, I come up with r is equal to 0.9843. Now we're going to typically round to three decimal points for the r value. That is going to depend on your standardized table that you're using, but the ones that I use usually go out to three decimals. So I'm going to round that to 0.984. And so here we have our value for our correlation computed by hand. Now, once we get that computed, now we can go into our standard table and we can look up what the critical value is from our table. So when you, when you go to your table, it's going to have a column that categorizes them by N and most of them will have a significance level. So depending on your significance level will determine which of your um, critical values you would be using. The N, again, comes from how many data pairs do we have. So when I look up my critical values, I'm going to go to N equals 4. And then if my alpha for the problem is 0.05, then my critical value is 0 0.950. If my alpha is equal to 0 0.01, then my critical value is 0 0.990. Now your standardized table might have a slightly different setup, so you'll have to figure out how to read that. But once we get this found, um, then we have to go back to our problem and we have to figure out is our alpha 0 0.05 or is our alpha 0 0.01. Let's go through both of them. So if my alpha is 0 0.05, my significance level, then my critical value was 0 0.950. So when I compare my computed value here to my critical value, my absolute value of my computed value is larger than the critical value. So if my significance is at 0 0.05, then I do have enough evidence to say there is correlation because my computed value was larger than my critical value. Now, if I'm using an alpha of 0 0.01, my critical value is 0 0.990. Well, when I compare that to the absolute value of my computed value, my computed value is smaller than my critical value. So if my significance level is 0 0.01, I do not have evidence to say that there is a correlation between the two. So it's very important that when you're working through these, you know what your significance level is because it can make a difference as to whether or not you have correlation. Okay, now as you can see, that took quite a bit of time to hand calculate the correlation and we were only using four data points, which is not typical. Usually you're going to have many more data points. So the computations by hand can get quite cumbersome. So what we're going to look at now is how can we do this using StatCrunch. So as you can see, doing the computation for correlation by hand can, can take some time and there's actually a lot of room for errors in there if you're not very careful. Well, we can have a program like StatCrunch do that computation for us rather quickly. So in order to do that, first thing I need to do is make sure my data values are entered. And then I'm going to go to Stat, Summary Stats and I'm going to select correlation. Now I have to select both my X and my Y values here 
So I need to either hold the shift button or the control button down in order to get both of those columns selected. And then when I come down here and select compute, you can see again that it tells us the correlation is 0.98431503, which matches the value that we got when we did the computation by hand. So you can see with just a few clicks, I can get that correlation, whereas before when I did the computation by hand, it took some time. So now in addition to using the critical value method that we had just looked at, we can also use the p-value method. And we're going to do this using StatCrunch. So with the p-value method, the first thing we have to do is we have to set up our hypothesis test. Now our null hypothesis is going to be that row is equal to zero. Now we have row here because we're looking, um, we're testing is the population, so we have row, correlation, equal to zero, which would imply that there's no correlation. That would be a measurement of its slope. And then our alternative hypothesis would be that rho is not equal to zero, which would imply that there is correlation. Now we can compute the test, test statistic by hand. And in order to do that, we would take our correlation, which is r, divided by, and then we have the square root of the quantity, one minus the correlation squared divided by n minus two. And then we would get our critical value from the standard t-table with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So we could still do the critical value method um, using StatCrunch and calculating our test statistic, but we're going to go ahead and look at the p-value. Now, once we um, get into StatCrunch and we look at how to compute this, just like with all of our other hypothesis testing, if the p-value is lower than your alpha, than your significance, then we do have enough evidence, in this case, to reject the null hypothesis, which would say that there was no correlation, and so we have evidence to support that there is correlation. So p-value being less than alpha is still the same as it was for all of the other ones. Now, once we get into StatCrunch, we just have to go to a slightly different menu than what we did before when we were calculating the straight correlation. Now, if we want to test for correlation using the p-value method, again, we need to have our data entered into StatCrunch. And this time, I'm going to go to the Stat menu. But now, in order to do the p-value method, because it's um, involved with a full hypothesis test, I'm going to go down to Regression and then Simple Linear. It's going to ask me for my x variable. It's going to ask me for my y variable. And then I just need to come down here and I need to make sure that my null hypothesis for the slope is still set equal to zero and that the alternative hypothesis for my slope is not equal to zero because that's what I had for my original null and alternative hypothesis. Then I can press compute. And now you wanna make sure that you read your output table very carefully. Now it shows me right here the value of my correlation again. So if I need that value, I can still get it through this method. But now if we're going to use the p-value method, I want to come right down here to this column where it tells me the information regarding my slope. Now I have my test statistic here, 7.8904. We could have gotten that value if we had done the hand computation for it, but it also shows me my p-value right here. Again, make sure you're looking at the line that is indicated by the slope, not the intercept. And I can see my p-value is 0 0.0157. So now I can compare that to my significance level to determine whether or not I can reject the null hypothesis. And now remember, the null hypothesis indicates that there was no correlation. And then the alternative hypothesis was that we had correlation. So if I have an alpha of 0 0.05, my p-value is lower than that, which means I could reject that null hypothesis that says there's no correlation and support my alternative, just like we found before with the critical value. Now, if my significance level is 0 0.01, my p-value is larger than that, which indicates that I could not reject the null hypothesis. And so I, I don't have evidence to support the alternative which is the same results that we got when we um, checked for the correlation using the critical value method also. So now, no matter which method you choose, whether you do it by hand, whether you do it just having um, some technology program 
calculate the correlation and then you use the standardized table. Or if you have technology help you out and do the p-value method, you always want to make sure that you know how to interpret your results for the method that you're using. Okay, now that we have kind of all the technology done and the computations done, now we're going to look at one more thing, and that's interpreting the R squared value. Now, this is a little bit abstract for some, some people, so it might take a little while to really kind of wrap your head around this. But when we look at the value of R squared, so R squared means we take our correlation that we computed and we actually square it. So what this indicates once we square it is it gives us the proportion of the variation in our y, um, our y topic that can be explained by the linear relationship between the x and the y topics. So for our example, we had a correlation of 0 0.9431, etc. So when I square that, I actually just type it into my calculator and square it, I get 0 0.968866. Usually we won't take it out to that many decimals. So what this means is that 0.969, so if I round it to my three decimals, that would round to 0.969, um, or about 97%, if I turn that to a percentage, of the variation in the amount spent on groceries per week, per household, because this right here was my Y topic. So I'm looking in the amount of variation in the Y topic can be explained by the linear relationship between the number of children per household and the amount spent per week on groceries. So it might take a little while to really kind of think through what does that mean, what does it look like, but that's what our interpretation would be for the example we just did. So if we do just a quick summary of what we kind of checked out in this video, we looked at what linear correlation was and that it can measure the strength of a linear relationship. It's always going to have a value between negative 1 and 1 inclusively. Okay, one thing to keep in mind again, it does not imply cause and effect. There's four classifications that we looked at. It could be considered positive correlation, negative correlation, nonlinear correlation, or no correlation. You can calculate it by hand or by technology. Um, if you're allowed to use technology, I would use technology as much as you can because it's going to simplify and um, really speed up the process and there's less room for error. We can use the critical value approach or you can use the p-value method to determine if the linear correlation exists. And then we looked at the um, interpretation of what our r-squared value means. Okay, so hopefully you have just kind of a general understanding now of correlation. If you're using StatCrunch, you can, um, you can go through those menus and, and figure out how to do those. Um, Okay, so that's all I have for this video for the basics of linear correlation. Um, you'll want to practice using StatCrunch or whatever technology program you're using to make sure that you become fluid with how to get those computations. And then also make sure that you're confident with how to do the interpretation. Whether you use the critical value method or the p-value method, just make sure you're confident with the method that you prefer.